But I should point out before we start that we're going to be looking at circular orbits. You can also have orbits that are elliptical. You folks just don't have the math skills to handle that yet. Although those of you in calculus, maybe I think you looked at the ellipse and so you know what that weird equation is. We're not going to look at those. There's all sorts of other ways that you can do orbits. So we're looking at the simplest case. I should point that out. So for example, we're going to pretend that the Earth orbits the Sun in a circle. It doesn't. It's nearly a circle. If you actually see it graphed, you would think it was a circle, but it's actually, when you run the equation, it's an ellipse. It's ever so slightly longer in one direction than the other. We're just going to ignore that because we don't have the math for that. Example one says, draw a force diagram for mass little m in orbit. Okay, this is a job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting on little m? Can I say get the obvious one? Yes, I can. Which way is gravity going to be pointing? What's, can you use the word that starts with the letter L? K. Are there any other forces acting on it? Well, if it's in outer space, it's in a vacuum, so no air resistance. You know what? That's it. And here, right now, is the whole thrust of today's lesson. This is the orbital mechanics equation. When you're in orbit, I guess gravity is what's pulling us in a circle. In fact, any time I see the trigger word orbit, I know I can assume that. I might not need it, but if I do need to, I can always go there. It's one of my starting points. So an orbit is circular motion with gravity as the inwards force. It's what's pulling me in a circle. Example two says this. A 10,000 kilogram satellite is orbiting 20,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. First of all, nice try, Duick. We don't do physics with kilometers. How do I go from kilometers to meters? Taryn. That's meters per second and kilometers, so no. How do I go from kilometers to meters? By the way, please don't be driving on the same roads as me. Ugh. How many meters in a kilometer? So how many meters in two kilometers? How many meters in 20,000 kilometers? 20,000 thousand. You know what? You times by a thousand. I'm going to write it in scientific notation. It's adding three zeros, so it's going to be two times 10 to the seventh meters. And then the second phrase I'd like you to underline is the phrase above the Earth's surface. That two times 10 to the seventh that's that distance. Is that a radius? Is that all the way to the center of the circle? Paige is shaking her head intelligently. So we're going to have to do some adjustments here. Okay. Anyways, it says write force equations. Well, the trigger word, yeah, I'm underlining a whole bunch of stuff. It says orbit. As soon as it says orbit, my force equation I can write is gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Now, you could almost say that was the answer to part A. I have written a force equation, but let's go one step further. Are we cosmic? Are we in outer space right now? Then I can't use for gravity the obvious one, mg. I need to use Newton's universal gravitation. Big G, big M, little m over r squared equals m ac. Which version of AC am I going to use, Zach? What are they asking me to find in part B? So which version of AC am I going to use? Look at your formula sheet. You just wrote a test on this. Yeah. AC, circular acceleration. How do you know? What did they ask me to find in part B? Now, what if they had said, how long will it take the satellite to complete its orbit? That's period. 
and I would use the 4 pi squared r over t squared. Uh, that's, again, pretty much all we're going to be doing. So on the next line, I'm going to, oh, by the way, does it matter the mass of the satellite? It turns out, no. All satellites at that speed will be orbiting at that radius. All satellites at that radius will be orbiting at the same speed, regardless of their mass. So we get this. Big G, big M over R squared equals just V squared over R. The little M's canceled. What do I have, Zach, on the bottom on the left-hand side? What do I have on the bottom on the right-hand side? Does one of those cancel? I'm not sure. You know what? Do I have one fraction equals one fraction? Then stuff can move how? So, you know, this little r here can move to the top right there. Yes? Ooh, you know what? One of these r's will cancel. That won't always be the case. The most common mistake is kids cancel an R that doesn't. So I encourage you walk through that procedure until you get really comfortable with it. What did B want me to find? Well, I've got the V squared by itself. I guess V orb, orbital speed, is equal to the square root of big G big M over R. Some kids memorize that. I don't bother. I derive it. How? Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. I start there. I start with this line, and I can derive whatever I need to. What's big G? 9.8? No, no, no. Uh, um, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Big M is the mass of the planet. What are we orbiting around in this question? The question tells you. What are we orbiting around in this question? Starts the letter E. Earth. Uh, mass, of, mass of the Earth, that's on your formula sheet in that same data section where big G is. And we're going to be using that section more and more and more for the next couple of units. Uh, R. Well, R is this distance. Isn't that 2 times 10 to the 7th? No. What is that distance? How can I figure it out? So let's start writing out some numbers. You want to do a massive square root sign because unfortunately the numbers just aren't convenient. We're going to be writing some big numbers here. So the first one is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. What's the mass of the Earth? Okay, you all found where you know where that is on your formula sheet. Well, R is from the center of the planet out here. Mud, how far from the surface of the Earth to the orbit. How far from the surface of the Earth to the orbit? How far from the surface of the Earth to the orbit? No. What is it? Two times two times ten to the seventh. Because that's the altitude. How can I turn an altitude into a radius? Really? Okay. You ready, boys and girls? I'm going to zoom way in. Look up. But I'm going to pick on you. How far from here to here? Let me get my eraser going. There we go. How far from here to here? Two times. How far from here to here? This distance right there. Isn't that radius of the Earth? Which is? Yes, it's on your green sheet, or blue sheet, or yellow sheet, whatever color it is this year. Okay, so then here's my question. How long is this red line? Yes! People! Wow. 
You awake? You'd have a few more humans here. If they give you an altitude above the Earth's surface, you'll have to add the radius of the planet, of the Earth. Sometimes they'll give you the orbital radius, which means they already did that for you. Okay, so the number that's going to go here is, what's the radius of the Earth? Mud, keep going. I missed the power. Thank you. Plus 2 times 10 to the 7th. All of you should try typing this in because the expressions are going to get messier than this. You've got to be able to handle this before we move on to the more advanced stuff. For me, I'm going to type what's inside the square root first and then I'm going to go square root answer button. And I get 3,888. Just to give you an idea, generally you'll find if you're calculating an orbital speed, it will be in the thousands. Unless the satellite is way, 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 way out there, because the further away it is, the weaker gravity is, the slower it can get away with traveling, then you might get an answer in the hundreds, but I'm trying to think if I've even ever made an example like that. I don't think I have. I'll, go, I'll call it 3,890 meters per second. Okay. So let's rehash. If we see the word orbit, gravity is what's pulling us in a circle. And from there, we can derive whatever we need to derive. We need to make sure, did they give me an altitude or did they give me an orbital radius? So a little note that orbital speed is independent of the mass of the orbiting object. It only depends on the radius and the central planet. Okay. Uh, by the way, that also means if you measure the orbital speed of something, you can get the mass of the planet that it's orbiting around if you measure its speed and its radius. That's how we've been able to get some masses of some stars way, way out there. Because we don't, if we see an exoplanet, we can't measure the mass of the exoplanet, but that's okay. That mass cancels. We can use the, estimate the radius and we can measure the orbital period, figure out the mass of the star. So I guess we said V orb was the square root of big G big M over R. I've never bothered memorizing that. I mean, you can add it to your blue sheet if you really want to, but to me, it starts out with gravity is what's pulling us in a circle. Let's talk about what an orbit is. It says this, fill in the proof to below to show that when an object is in orbit, its inwards acceleration is the same as the gravity field at that distance. Okay. Well, What's the inwards acceleration? V squared over R, like Zach said earlier. Yes? Oh, and then it says substitute V, well, orbit speed is big G, big M over R. So I guess I would substitute that in for the V squared, and I would get, you know what? Look up. I'm not going to substitute V I'm going to substitute v squared because that would just get rid of the square root way, way easier. If I plug this into here, what will I get? Well, I'll get big G, big M over R over R, which becomes big G, big M over R squared. Yes? Okay. What is big G, big M over R squared? What is that? You know what? I'm pretty sure that's universal gravitational field. Wasn't that what we did last lesson? It was. So what does that mean? We've just proven, Paige, that because 
The circular acceleration is the universal gravitational field and orbiting object, it's in free fall. That's what's happening here. Well, how can it be in free fall and not crash into the Earth? Now, I mentioned this to you way back in Physics 11. In fact, I think I showed you an OK Go video where they had rented a vomit comet and they were diving down in parabolic arcs and experiencing brief moments of weightlessness. We said that the reason astronauts float on the International Space Station is it because there's no gravity. No, it's because there's no normal force. And why is there no normal force, Sarah? Because they are in, I'm looking for a word that starts with letter F, free fall. So I told you that last year, and then I said, so the International Space Station is in free fall. It is. Why doesn't it crash into the Earth? That's the question. Here was Isaac Newton's analysis of orbits. And remember, he was doing this really before we'd even invented hot air balloons. He was imagining outer space. He said, imagine you had a tall mountain on Earth and a big cannon, and you fired it. Boom. What if you put in more gunpowder so you fired it faster? Boom. What if you fired it even faster? Boom. Boom. Page, he said, it seems to me that there's just the right speed that you could fire the cannon so that even though it's falling to the earth at all times, like these earlier examples, it never gets any closer. That's what an orbit is. You give it just the right tangent to the radius circular centripetal speed. We can calculate that. So that although it's falling always, it never gets closer. You just match the curvature of the planet that you're orbiting, the object that you're orbiting. So the fact that an object is in orbit, turn the page, and is in continuous free fall, it's interesting. It means that things in orbit are always falling towards the Earth, even though they never get there. And that's true of everything in orbit. This explains why astronauts seem to float on the space shuttle or on the International Space Station. Is it because there's no gravity, Owen? No, it's because they're in free fall, no normal force. Okay. It also means the astronauts experience continuously until they get used to it, the same physical feeling as falling, that same stomach feeling. It's why the astronauts will tell you, first couple of days, you're not happy. You're a little nauseous. But once you get used to it, oh, it's glorious. Chris Hadfield, likes to, who did six months on the International Space Station, he likes to say, because he, he'd done several space shuttle trips, he says, those were cool. It takes a couple of days, but you kind of get used to it. He says, after six months, you feel like you're a space native. Flying becomes second nature. You just, it's, it becomes a habit. Would be a neat place, to, neat thing to get to. Look up. Put your pencils down. Have you ever been floating in a swimming pool all comfy and warm thinking, man, it'd be cool to be an astronaut. You could float out in outer space, look down at the Earth and everything. It'd be so neat. Only that's not how it is at all. If you are in outer space, you are orbiting the Earth. It's called free fall. You're actually falling towards the Earth. All right, Think about this for a moment. That's the feeling you get if you're going over the top of a roller coaster going like, whoa. Only you're doing this the whole time you're orbiting the Earth for two, three, four hours, days, whatever it takes, right? So how does orbiting work? Let's take a page from Isaac Newton. He had this idea, a little mental experiment. You take a cannon, you put it on top of a hill. If you shoot the cannonball, it goes a little bit ways. But if you shoot it harder, it goes far enough so that it lands a little bit past the curvature of the Earth. Well, you can imagine if you shot it really, really, really hard, it would go all the way around the Earth and come back, boom, and like hit them in the backside or something, all right? Let's zoom way back and put you in a little satellite over the North Pole of the Earth and consider North to be up. You're going to fall down and hit the Earth, but you are actually moving sideways really fast. So when you fall down, you're going to miss. You're going to end up on the side of the Earth, falling down, 
and now the earth is pulling you back in sideways. All right, and so it's pulling you back in, and you fall down, and so you miss the earth again, and now you're under the earth, and the earth is going to pull you up, but you're moving sideways still. So you're going to miss the earth again, and now you're on the other side of the earth, moving upward, and the earth's pulling you sideways. All right, so you are going to fall sideways, but you're going to be moving up, and so you'll miss, and now you're back on top of the earth again, over the North Pole, going sideways, and falling down. And yep, you guessed it, you'll keep missing because you're moving so fast. In this way, astronauts orbit the Earth. They're always falling towards the Earth, but they're always missing. And therefore, they're falling all the time. They feel like they're falling, so you just have to kind of get over it. So technically, if you ran fast enough and tripped, you could miss the Earth. But there's a big problem. First, you have to be going 8 kilometers a second. That's 18,000 miles an hour, just over Mach 23. The second problem, if you're going that fast, yes, you would orbit the Earth and come back where you came from, but there's a lot of air in the way, right? Much less people and things. So you would burn up due to atmospheric friction. So I do not recommend this. In a cartoon, example four, a character kicks a football the wrong way, but the football orbits the Earth and still goes through the uprights. What speed was the football moving? Hmm. Paige, what's A asking me to find? There's a trigger word, underline the word orbits. Because if we're in orbit, Paige, we can say gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. We're doing orbits, we're going cosmic, so we're going to use the cosmic version of gravity, which is big G, big M, little m over R squared equals little m. Which version of AC do you think they want me to use, Paige? The one with the period in it or the one with the speed in it? V squared over R. Mass cancels, that's kind of nice. Does an R cancel here? An R does cancel here, and in fact, I can square root. This is the orbital speed equation that we wrote on the previous page. So we get this. V orb equals the square root of big G, big M over R. which is going to be the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Paige, what was the mass of the Earth? Over. And we're orbiting just above the Earth's surface, so what's the radius of the Earth? That's what we'll use. Okay, what would our orbital speed be? What do you get? What do you get? Try typing, again, try typing these in. I really encourage you. This unit, we're going to be doing the most heavy-duty calculator typing that we're going to be doing all year. I got 7,910. You might recall the video said 8 kilometers a second, 7.9 kilometers a second. So yeah, that's what the video said. So 7,910 meters per second. Karen, what does B want me to find? In fact, you know what? I think the period, because it's how long to go around once. So for B, are we still in orbit? Well, then gravity is what's pulling me 
in a circle. And Karen, I'm still going to go cosmic, big G, big M, little m, over R squared equals, don't forget the little m, but which version of AC am I going to use this time? The 4 pi squared R over T squared. Does little m still cancel? Well, that's kind of nice, so we don't need to know the mass of the football. What are we trying to get by itself here? The T. Where is the T right now on the stuff can move diagonally? So I'm going to move the T squared to the top on the left. I'm going to leave the 4 there, the pi squared there. There was an r, and I'm going to move the r cubed up and uh, the r squared up and over. I'm going to get an r cubed. Here the r does not cancel. And this is why I said don't always assume that an r will cancel. It won't always. And then I guess down here I'll have big G, big M. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's t squared. That's t squared. Yep. And this is why I said we're going to get some really complicated expressions here. I can't tidy them up. But in terms of the numbers, it's going to be 4 pi squared, 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. You better know how to use your cubed button or to the power of button all over 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. There's big G, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. The square root of that. Every one of you wants to try typing that in. Believe it or not, that's about a B minus or B level expression. We're going to get yuckier. Page, it's the universe that we have. It didn't give us convenient numbers here. The physics is clean. The typing isn't. 4 pi squared. You should get 5,070. If you didn't, well, we'll try the next one carefully. But this is the level of type. But this is the unit why I was yelling at you last year in Physics 11. Get a good calculator. It was this. Makes it so much easier. Karen, you get that okay? That's seconds. I'm just curious. How many minutes is that? How could I convert that to minutes? How would I convert seconds to minutes? Sorry? Divide by six? I'm, I'm just curious. How long would it take to go around the Earth at that speed? You'd be going around the Earth every 84 and a half minutes. The International Space Station, which is a little higher, traveling a little slower, it goes around the Earth about every 94 minutes. Oh, and is there a part C? What's part C asking? Okay, why doesn't this work on the surface of the Earth? If you're paying attention, the video might have given you a hint as well. Air resistance, okay? Why is this possible? This would be great on the moon, by the way. In fact, if we do ever have moon bases, on Earth, we have to have our satellites a fair ways up there to get them out of most or all of the Earth's atmosphere. Even the International Space Station is scraping a little bit of the Earth's atmosphere, which is why we got to give it a booster every so often. On the moon, wouldn't be a problem. We could have our satellites, oh, what's the highest mountain on the moon? Okay, go 100 meters above that for safety. Easy peasy. So, C, air, 
resistance. I like example five. I like example five. Example five is a nice question. Okay. Let's suppose that you're a subsidiary of SpaceX and a weather satellite company comes to you and they say, we want our satellite to orbit the Earth every 300 minutes. Well, first thing that I would say is, thank you. 300 minutes is what? How many seconds? Taryn? Okay, and that's the period. All right. Now, let's get down to business. We're sitting in our office. We're doing the engineering. First thing we'd like to know is what should the orbital radius be? The what radius? Did you say orbit? Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. The gravitational equation is not going to change. Big G, big M, little m over r squared equals, and then don't forget the little m, and then it's going to be AC. Mud, which version of A am I going to use here? Why? Because they gave me or asked for the period. Okay, uh, 4 pi squared r over t squared. Did they need to, at this point, tell me the mass of the satellite? No. Nope. Okay, so I can tell the company that'll affect how much fuel we use, and we'll look at that a couple lessons from now. Then the M won't cancel, because heavier satellites will take way more fuel, obviously. Okay. What are we trying to find? What? Let's get the R by itself. Is this one fraction equals one fraction? And Zach's stuff can move how? Oh, you know what? I'm going to move those to there. Now I've got all the R's on one side on the top. I guess the T squared will move to there on the top. What about the 4 pi squared? And I'll get this, r cubed equals big G, big M, T squared, all over 4 pi squared. All. Oh. How do I get rid of a cubed? Mr. Duick, I get to use my cube root button on my calculator? Yes, you do. It's actually a useful function. And this is also my way of saying all of you for this example better figure out how to do a cube root. And if you haven't picked up on my enthusiasm, you should clue in. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. Because we get to use a whole new button on our calculator. It's the cube root, not the square root, the cube root. First, let's write out our expression, because this is going to be messy. Cube root of big G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Big M, what are we orbiting? Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. The period, 18,000. Don't forget the squared all over 4 pi squared. Whew. I like that. Here we go. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24th times 18,000, don't forget the squared, divided by bracket 4 pi squared. And my cube root button is math option 4 answer button. I know where it is on mine. 
and I get 1484809.9 and probably more decimals. Is there anybody that cannot find their cube root button? This is the time where I will come help you and show you where it is because I'm a calculator nerd. You all know where it is on your calculator? Excellent. I think I'm going to write this in scientific notation. 1.48 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Units to radius. Ooh. B asks, what should it, its altitude be? Isn't that what we just found? What did we find? What did we find? Where is the orbital radius measured from? Center of the Earth. How can I find altitude? Well, Here's Earth. There's orbital radius. That's going to be the altitude. Yeah. It's going to be R orb minus R Earth. Oh, in the same way, if you need R orb and they give you altitude, it's altitude plus R Earth gives you R orb. Okay. You maybe, I don't know if you want to add that to your blue sheet or not. I didn't put it on your yellow sheet because I think it's reasonable for me to ask you to figure that one out. So in our case here, altitude is going to be, I'm going to write 1.48 times 10 to the seventh, but you know I'm using my answer button, minus 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. I get 8.47 uh, 8 times 10 to the 6th. All right. C. Danica, what does C want me to find? Okay. I could do this. Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. And then I could walk through it. And I think I'll end up with V orb equals the square root of big G, big M over R. And that would totally work, and I would give you totally full credit. It looks like, don't do it yet, Mud. It looks like I'm going to have to use R. So actually, the first thing I'm going to do, I'd like to get R back on my calculator. So I'm going to plus 6.38 times 10 to the 6th on my answer button. And now I've got that number back. It's less typing. It's more accurate. And I'm lazy that way. I did that. Totally works if you did it that way. Or... You're orbiting in a circle. What's our equation for circular speed from the last unit? You'll get the same answer for either of those. I would argue this one's a little quicker to get to because it's actually an equation sitting on your formula sheet. So if I was my natural, lazy, but organized self, this is what I would use. No matter what, I'm having to use my answer from A, a radius. So I would go to... Pi, uh, I'm going to write 1.48 times 10 to the seventh, but you know I'm using my answer button. What was the period? 18,000? I would probably choose to go with that. All of you type that version in, and I'll just let you know that 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 5.98 
times 10 to the 24th divided by answer button. Oh, typo. What did I do? Divided by answer button square root. Is that the same thing you folks have as well by going 2 pi r over? The, yeah, doesn't matter. 5,180. I told you orbital speeds are usually in the thousands. Are we in the thousands? We probably did this right. Okay. I, I mean, I guess we can write, what was it? R equals the cube root of big G, big M, T squared, all over 4 pi squared. Should you memorize that? No, I wouldn't even add it to my blue sheet because it all comes out of gravity is what's pulling me in a circle and tell me what you want to get by itself. Um, I don't know if you recall, in Physics 11, I showed you a video of the ISS getting a boost, and you could see the astronauts looked like they were floating away from us when actually the International Space Station was accelerating towards us. And one of the astronauts, there was a Japanese astronaut on there who was just really, ooh, ah, and I told you, he's one of my favorites. He also was a college baseball player. So when he was on the International Space Station, of course you would do something like this. Space, the final frontier. It's a beautiful day for a baseball game, ladies and gentlemen. The pitcher winds up. There's the pitch. The it's a screaming a fastball and right over the plate. It's Will the batter be able to connect? strange new world. To seek out new life, a new the pitch is screaming towards the plate. To boldly go the batter no sets his feet, before. eyes the pitch, and takes a mighty swing. Oh, the batter connects. It goes back, 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 back. Oh, what a great catch. He was right. Of course, you will always love with yourself at least. Chris Hadfield video am I doing, Mr. Duick? I think I'm doing this one here. The question is, if you get a cloth dripping wet without gravity and you wring it out, what's going to happen? What will happen to a wrung out cloth? So when Mr. Hadfield, when astronaut Hadfield was on the space station, one of the things they did, they had a contest for Canadian elementary school students. They had to suggest an experiment that could be done with equipment on the International Space Station. And so two girls asked, what would happen if you wrung out a soaking wet cloth in zero G? So, and had to use equipment that was here on board the space station. We might have the coolest washcloths ever here on the space station. I'm going to show you. Here's one of our washcloths. And it's packed in. It's put down into this little tiny hockey puck so that uh, it saves space. But when you open up a hockey puck and you pull out your washcloth, this is the one I'm going to use for the experiment today. And so when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vise somewhere. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm going to get this soaking wet, and then we're going to see what will happen when we wring it out. 
Merritt and Kendra suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space, so instead I filled a water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. Okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's let's start wringing it out. This is pretty cool. It's really wet. It's becoming a tube of water. The water's all over my hands, in fact, it rings out of the cloth into my hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. Okay, so the experiment worked beautifully. And the answer to the question is, the water squeezes out of the cloth, and then because of the surface tension of the water, it, um, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth, and then up into my hand, almost like you had jello on your hands or gel on your hand and it'll just stay there wonderful moisturizer in my hands and the cloth doesn't really unravel itself it just stays there floating like a uh, like a dog's chew toy soaking wet great experiment worked perfectly meredith and kendra congratulations great idea that surface tension phenomena is actually a real issue so the closest we've had to an astronaut dying on the International Space Station was a few years ago. There was an Italian astronaut, they were doing a spacewalk, and unbeknownst to him, his water bag that they, because they're out there for four or five hours, had burst and was slowly leaking. And so he all of a sudden started to feel a little bit of moisture on the back of his head, and he radioed in, he's like, I can, I feel some moisture on the back of my head that's not supposed to be there. And the water slowly began, slowly began to crawl across his face with surface tension. And he was a few minutes away from that water covering his mouth and his nose. And once that happened, you, know, you can't get it off. So they had to abandon the spacewalk and do what they call an emergency ingress. You've got to get back to the space station very, very quickly. And then they very carefully wiped the water off. That particular phenomenon, I, list, I was listening to Chris Hadfield talk about that because he's still following everything. He said what was interesting, the way that water bag burst was impossible to recreate on the Earth. The circumstances, the reason it burst only could have happened in zero G. It was something that they couldn't have predicted or recreated or found in any kind of a test. The only way that could have happened was a series of events that could only occur due to long-term exposure in zero gravity. So space travel is still dangerous. Example six, I like example six, I like example six, I like example six, example six is a nice question. A satellite has an orbital altitude of 1.2 times 10 to the six meters above the Earth. Okay, cool. Sarah, what's A want me to find? Isn't that 1.2 times 10 to the sixth? Here's the Earth. Here is 1.2 times 10 to the sixth. I want orbital radius. I guess our orb is going to be 1.2 times 10 to the sixth plus the radius of the Earth, which is what? 7.58 times 10 to the sixth, I think, but double check me. What'd you get? Is it seven point? So, as far as I'm concerned, if we are in orbit, Zach, there are four things. Orbital speed, orbital period, 
orbital radius and orbital altitude because if you know the radius you know the altitude if I give you any one of those you can find the other three how gravity is what's pulling me in a circle and carefully go from there so okay Xavier what's B want me to find gravity is what's pulling me in a circle I think I still remember the equation, but let's derive it just in case for practice anyhow. It's going to be big G, big M, little m over r squared. That's universal gravitation. Equals M, which version of AC am I going to use here? A little m cancels. <coughs> Does an R cancel in this particular version of our equation? Yeah. Oh, and then how do I get rid of a squared? Okay, so I get V orb equals big square root of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. 5.98 times 10 to the 24th all over 7.58 times 10 to the 6th. You get 7,250, okay? A little closer to the Earth, so it's got to go faster in order to maintain its orbit because gravity is a little stronger here. The closer you are to the Earth's surface, the faster your orbital speed. Remember, on the Earth's surface, it was right around 8,000 meters per second. Okay. Well, Paige, let's take it all the way. What C want me to find? I might be able to find it by going like this. Because I know the orbital speed. I just found it. Yes. And I know R. You know what? I, I'll do it that way. I could also go gravity is what's pulling me in a circle and get the big T by itself. I full credit for whichever method you use. But since I happen to have orbital speed, where is the T right now? On the? But stuff can move. The T will move to the top. The V will move to the bottom. I'll get, I guess, orbital period is 2 pi r over the speed. So it's going to be 2 pi 7.58 times 10 to the 6th divided by my answer button. And I get 65, 60, uh, 6570 if I go to three sig figs. And I would have got exactly the same answer if I'd gone gravity. It's what's pulling me in a circle. There's the basics of circular orbital mechanics. What's your homework? Try number one. It's good. Number two. Uh, you'll use the mass of the sun because you're orbiting the sun, so make, but you don't need mass of Mercury because it's going to cancel. But I did give you the radius of Mercury's orbit around the sun. Three is good. Skip four. Five is good. Six is good. Seven is good. Nine is good. I skipped eight. Putting a star next to ten, it's tricky, but you can handle it. Twelve. 
12 is good. 13 and 14 is good. 15 is good. Put your pencils down and look up. When you go to the bathroom on Earth, you're relying on gravity pretty pretty heavily. Imagine if you were halfway done and there were, somebody shut off gravity, it would be a mess. And you'd float off the toilet. So this is an elementary school and a student has asked Chris Hadfield, so how do you go to the bathroom in outer space? This is how. So, so when, we, when we designed our space toilet, first it has to have a seat belt on it to hold you down. And then we decided to separate solids and liquids because they're easier to store that way. So we just have a tube that you pee into and it has air pulled into the tube. So it's not a big deal. For the women, there's a cup fits up against them. For the guys, it's just like a little funnel. You just pee into this tube and it goes into a, into a sewage tank. But the solids that come out of your body, that's a harder problem to solve. And it's an important medical one because on Earth, everything falls on the floor. But in space, it's going to float around. So, so it, it'll really make you sick. If you re-ingest something that came out of your body, it will really make you sick. And we can't afford to get that sick. So we designed a toilet that instead of gravity pulling everything into the toilet, it has air flow. There's air pulled down into the toilet. Sort of windy when you're sitting there, but it pulls everything out of your body. Everything that comes out of your body gets pulled down into the toilet by the air. And then in the storage tank, we just expose that to the vacuum of space, so it basically just freeze dries everything, so it kills all the bacteria, so that there's no smell, and then and we just store it. And then when you have a whole bunch of it stored, we put it in a little unmanned supply ship, and we undock it, and it burns up in the atmosphere. So the next time you see a beautiful shooting star going across the sky, that's what it might be.